Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to episode 15 of TempleCast 2020. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. This podcast is one of the ways that our extended Temple community is trying to stay connected during the coronavirus pandemic of 2020 and the resulting period of quarantine that most of our nation is experiencing. Today we're going to hear lectionary scriptures and prayer for Friday, April 17th. We begin today with a prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we turn to our psalm for today. It's Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And next we hear from Paul's first letter to the Christians living in the city of Corinth. We'll hear 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 10a. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one untimely born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. This particular excerpt from Paul's letters has always fascinated me. I always wonder, did he know that he was single-handedly turning the world upside down? Did he know that people would be reading these words thousands of years from his time, let alone that they, we, would be to some extent shaping our way of being in the world according to these words of his. I assume he did not know all that. I assume that Paul was thinking only of the Christians in Corinth who were having issues in their church at the time, issues that he was hoping to help them resolve. He thought he was speaking only to them. At least that's what I believe. If he had known that his words would be seen as divinely inspired as little as 30 or 40 years after he wrote them, would he have still said, 
I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God? Would he have included such a frank and stark admission of the monstrous Pharisee he had once been? A man so virulent and hateful that he oversaw the murder by stoning of many Christians, and in particular of the first ever Christian martyr, Stephen. You can read about that incident in Acts chapter 7. See, I don't believe Paul was writing the things he was writing out of a sense of false modesty. I think he was simply stating the truth about what he had been. He couldn't really lie or whitewash his record because there had to be some folks in Corinth who knew Paul from those days and had maybe even witnessed some of what he did. I think he said the things we heard above because he and the people he was writing to all knew that they were true. He saw himself as the least of the apostles because, one, he used to be a persecutor of Jesus, and two, he never met Jesus face to face or hung out with him like the apostles all did. Paul was an apostle. That word, by the way, simply means sent one. Jesus had designated some of his followers as apostles during his ministry. Much later, while Paul was still trying to stamp out the church of Jesus, Jesus himself appeared to Paul to inform him that his life was about to be completely redirected and that there was nothing he could do about it. That all happened years after Jesus called his first apostles, years after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus as well. That's what Paul means when he writes that Jesus appeared to him as one untimely born. But then Paul comes to this thought, but by God's grace I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. It might be the biggest understatement in the entire Bible. His grace to me was not without effect. It's like Steph Curry saying, yeah, I can kind of sort of play basketball. That is his sport, right? Or it's like if Sir Paul McCartney were to say, yeah, I was in a band once. We weren't bad. But Paul the apostle, not the beetle, wasn't understating things. He was telling the truth. It was by God's grace that he was what he was. He was a man who single-handedly changed the world, and that's not even a little bit of an exaggeration. But he knew that such a change didn't happen because of him. It happened through him. If you think of yourself as a follower of Christ, then you are a sent one. And I realize that in our current situation, the farthest you are going to be sent may be the living room. But nonetheless, a sent one is what you are. And if by God's grace you are sent, then God's grace will work through you and will not be without effect. You have the power, or I should say, God's power working through you can and will change things. The key is allowing that power, that grace, that love of Christ to work through you. Since most of us are stuck at home right now, let's start there. How can God's grace have an effect through you in your home? Do you have contact with others outside your home? Maybe you are one of the essential workers who have to leave the house for work most days. If so, first let me say thank you for doing what you do. But also let me ask, how might God's grace have an effect through you as you do your essential work? or as you meet with others online or talk with them over the phone or via email, how might God's grace, and here I'm going to meddle a little bit, I apologize in advance, how might God's grace have an effect through you on social media? All right, I'll stop there. That's probably more than enough to think about. It is for me anyway. Let's pray. God, your grace is never without effect. Your love is never without effect. The only way your grace and love can be ineffective is if we refuse to let it flow through us. May that never be, Lord. God, by that grace that works so powerfully in your world, help us to see ourselves as we are, not as more and not as less than how you see us. Help us this day and every day to go forth, even if it's just to the next room, as those who are sent by you in grace and in love and in the name of Jesus.
Amen. Thanks so much for listening. I do appreciate it, and I appreciate the comments that I've received online and off. I do encourage you, whether you're a regular part of our temple community or not, to share a comment, whether it's a joy, a struggle, a prayer need, or something else, on our Facebook page. Let's be sure to keep on sharing and encouraging one another in these strange and uncertain days. Until next time, grace and peace to all.